Hello and welcome to another quick tech tip with the Bearded Tech Guy. In this video, we'll be taking a look at how to add Link and Link devices to Home Assistant with Local Control by Home Assistant. Setting up this local integration will allow for Home Assistant to utilize Link and Link sensors, as well as use several of the Link and Link hubs, such as the eHub and the eRemote. What I really like about this integration is that with either the eHub or the eRemote, you're able to learn commands from an IR remote control that Home Assistant can then use as part of automations. Turn on the nightlight. Okay, turning on the nightlight. This opens up the door into being able to add remote control non-smart devices into Home Assistant really easily. And with such a low price point, you won't be breaking the bank if you need to have several IR blasters around your home. Take note that the eHub also supports RF control and has a motion, temperature, and humidity sensor built right in. For setup of this integration, you will need to have your Link Link devices already onboarded onto your network and have the Home Assistant Community Store installed. Both of these requirements are outside the scope of this video, but I'll have links in the description below on both of those topics if you need assistance. To get started, navigate to Hacks and click on Integrations. Next, click on the three dot menu at the top right hand side of the screen and select Custom Repositories. On the window that opens up, enter in the repository URL and assign the integration category. I'll have the URL in the description below for easy copying. Click on Add once all set. You should then see the new Link and Link local repository. Clicking on it will give you information about how the integration actually works, including how to learn remote codes, which we will be covering a little bit later in this video. To actually be able to use this integration, click on the blue download button at the bottom of the screen and click on download once more on the window that pops up. This will then pull everything from the repository we added. Going back to the integrations page of Hacks, we can see a red warning banner indicating that we need to restart Home Assistant, which will interrupt all running automations and scripts. A reboot is required for the integration to be usable. So once you're able to restart Home Assistant, navigate to Developer Tools and click on Check Configuration to make sure there won't be any issues when Home Assistant restarts. Once you get confirmation your configuration is good, click on Restart and select Restart Home Assistant. Click on Restart once more to have a Home Assistant go through the restart process. After a few moments that very well may feel like an eternity, Home Assistant should be fully restarted and we can continue on. Next, click on Settings and select Devices and Services. From here, click on the blue Add Integration button and search for Link and Link. You may notice the little box icon. This indicates it's a custom integration not packaged with Home Assistant. Select Link and Link, and after a few moments, you'll be prompted to enter in the host IP address of the device you want to add. If you don't have it already, you can either get the IP address from your wireless router or from the Link and Link app. To get the IP address from the Link and Link app, select the device you want to get the IP address and click on the three dot menu at the top right hand side of the screen. From the drop down, click on Modbus. From this page, you'll be able to find the IP address of the device. Next, go back to the device page and click on the menu button once more. This time, click on settings. On the new page, disable locked device. Back in Home Assistant, enter in the IP address you just found and click on submit. If you get the following pop-up, it means that the lock device setting was not saved, and you'll need to go back into the Link and Link app to disable the setting. If your device was successfully added into Home Assistant, you'll get the familiar pop-up allowing for you to assign an area. Within the device page itself, you'll see any sensors that might be available if your device has them. Mine doesn't, so I only have a toggle control. Take note that it does appear that this toggle needs to be on for the e-remote to be able to send commands via Home Assistant. Let's now go over the process to learn remote commands. If you taught the e-remote commands through the Link and Link app, they will not work through Home Assistant, unfortunately, as well as vice versa. You must learn the commands through Home Assistant if you want to be able to send the remote commands from Home Assistant. First navigate to Developer Tools and select Services. Then search for the Remote Learn Command Service. Under Targets, select the hub device we set up earlier. For device, give a meaningful name that makes sense to you for the device you'll be learning the commands for. For me, I'm going to go with the name of Nightlight. Command will be the name of the remote button you're about to learn. Since the button I'll be learning first toggles the power on and off, I'm going to name it Power Toggle. For command type, you'll select either IR or RF, based on the remote control you're trying to learn. Once ready, click on Call Service. The e-remote hub will then have its LED light turn on indicating it's ready. With your remote close to the hub, push the button you want to learn. If learned successfully, the call service button will turn into a green check mark momentarily. 
You can then repeat these steps as many times as you like till your remote commands. Just make sure to give the command a new name each time. And if you have multiple remotes to learn, you can do that as well. Just don't forget to update the device ID. To send a command you learned manually, change the service to Remote Send Command. Just like before, you'll select the eRemote Hub that is going to be sending the command. You'll then need to enter in the device name and command name you used to learn the command. Once all set, click on Call Service and the command will be sent out from the selected hub. If you enter in the wrong information, you'll get an error that looks like this. If you forgot what the device name or command names you used to learn the commands, you can find them in Home Assistant. You'll just need a File Explorer add-on. From within the File Explorer, navigate to Dot Storage, and then scroll down until you find a file that starts with Link and Link Remote. There will be at least two similar files here. We'll want to open the codes file. Here we will see all the currently learned remote commands and what the device name they are bound to. Now that Home Assistant knows remote commands it could send through our Link and Link eRemote hub, let's take a look at using this new ability within Automations. I have a nightlight that has an IR remote that we taught Home Assistant the commands to earlier. Normally using a remote isn't that big of a deal, but you have to set a timer no matter what to use it, and the timer has to be increased by 5 minute increments. So to set up the nightlight it takes several minutes, which over the course of even just a few weeks is kind of annoying. Luckily, the Link and Link eRemote hub tied into Home Assistant saves the day. For this example automation, I'm going to set the trigger to occur every day at sunset. For action, we'll scroll down and select remote, and then click on send command. This will add the call service action pre-populated with the remote send command service. Next, select the device, which will be the eRemote hub in my case. After, enter in the device name and the command that we taught to Home Assistant. For me, the device name will be Nightlight, and the command will be Power Toggle. If you need to have more remote commands sent, just repeat the steps we just went over for each different command you want to send. You can also repeat the same command if you need to instead of having to add multiple actions. The actual automation I have set up for my Nightlight will get triggered when a helper switch is turned on, which actually happens as part of a Google Home goodnight routine. When the virtual switch is turned on, the Nightlight is powered on. A 5 hour timer is set. The color is changed multiple times, the brightness is dimmed twice, and a 5 minute timer is added 120 times. Bedtime. Good night. Sure. Check out this nighttime music station on YouTube Music. I'd love to know what other automation ideas you have for the Link and Link eRemote Hub, so make sure to let me and the community know in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and as always, happy automating.